Hi, I'm Rick Wallum. Tonight I'm going to be tying a um, wet fly called a gray hackle yellow. Uh, it's also known as a dead chicken. So, first thing I use is um, the thread that I'm going to be using is a Adont uh, uni thread. I like it because it gives me good control and it, it's low bulk. Um, the hook I'm going to be tying this on is a TM code 230BL. Um, Fulling Mill also makes that same hook as well as Hannock. And uh, I'm going to be tying in a size 10. The main body of the fly is I'm using a Pearsall silk, um, <laughs> which is no longer available on the market, but there are several um, manufacturers that have a silk um, floss, and that's what I'm using the body as. And the underbody of that is going to be a Mylar um, silver tinsel. And that just gives the brightness to the fly and makes it a little easier. It glows in the water a little better. Uh, the rib, um, several options on that. Uh, you can use Largarten um, flat braid, or in this case, I'm using the Uni French. And it's a... Um, it's a braid, and I like the way that looks on the on the body of the fly. Uh, the tail is just a red hackle, um, a little softer red hackle, and then for the soft hackle, Hungarian partridge. And the Hungarian partridge has great variegation and really makes the fly look the way I want it to look in the water. Um, and that as well. As a variation, the original pattern called for a uh, grizzly hen hackle. And you can tie it in either, either way. I'm going to do the um, Hungarian partridge. So the first thing I want to do is attach my thread just behind the eye, giving myself room for the hackle to be tied in. I'm making touching wraps all the way back to the just before the bend of the hook. I break off my thread. I grab my uh, tailing material, which again is red hackle. I'm matching the tips up. Just sort of putting them in the position I want. I'm matching them so they're even. Uh, the measurement, just in this case I'm using the um, hook shank as a measurement tool. About the length of the shank, but it's not critical. It's not supporting the fly in any way. It's just giving a good, I like one wrap behind the tailing material just to kind of cock it and stand it up in place, wrap my thread forward, and I like to take it all the way forward just behind where I want that, where I'm going to tie the hackle in. That way I have a nice even underbody. And there is, in the recipe, there is sort of a sequence to tying this fly. I'm wrapping back to the tie-in point of the tail. I take my yellow floss, take a measure, and I'm again wrapping forward just so I can even up that body. My tie-in point for the floss is forward. pull it into shape, wrap back to the bend, and that ensures that I get a nice even body out of it. So the next step I'm going to do is take my mylar, trim a little piece of that off, 
This happens to be gold on one side, silver on the other. I want to have the silver side um, on the outside, so I kind of tie it in so the gold is facing me when I tie it. Wrap forward, lock that into my little material clip, even up the the ribbing material, tie that in, wrapping back to the back of the hook again, making sure that everything's tied in evenly. So the first thing I'm going to do is tie or wrap in my mylar tinsel as the underbody. Again, that just makes the silk floss, when it gets wet, it'll have some refraction to it. As opposed to the black thread that I'm using, will kind of bury that uh, color. It'll, the, the black will bleed through. A couple of wraps in front, a couple of wraps in back, and I lock that in. Next thing I'm going to do is tie or wrap in my my yellow floss. I take one wrap behind the rib and then spiral touching wraps all the way forward to just behind the eye again, leaving myself some room so I can tie the hackle in. I make one wrap behind maybe a couple of wraps, and this is where this dot thread really comes in handy. It's very low bulk, but I've, I've locked it in place by making a wrap behind, pulling the floss back, wrapping a couple in, in front, so when I do make my cut, it's not going to unravel on me. Some people like to put in a half hitch at this point. I prefer not to. Kind of readjusting my Now I'm just spiraling, and I can either do it with a rotary portion of my vise or just the way I'm doing it here and trying to evenly wrap that rib forward. A couple of wraps behind, a couple of wraps in front, trim with my scissors. And that's really the body of the fly with the tail. And then I want to step in and I'm tying in a partridge hackle. Uh, this is uh, the up toward the neck. It's uh, more white and black barring. Um, I'll take my hackle pliers and grip just at the very tip of that feather like so. I sweep the material back looking for the right length of hackle that I want to tie in. But more importantly, right here at the tip, I'm going to trim that and create a little triangle there. And that's my tie-in point for the hackle. Trap that down with my thread. Kind of position it using my fingers on sweeping back, tying that in. I'm pushing the tip of that hackle back and trapping it with my thread. And that really locks that hackle in place. I want to reach in with my hackle plier and grab the stem. And this is a critical part of the fly. This is where you really, I've tied it in so it, um, the convex part of the hackle is toward the tail. When I attach my hackle pliers, first thing I'm going to do is kind of reach in and sweep the first couple of barbules back. And that kind of sets me up for success. On the next several wraps I make. 
And as I'm looking at this, I'm looking at the length of the hackle as I go forward. Um, I want it to reach just about the bend of the hook, and this is perfect. And you do that kind of beforehand, you kind of measure your hackle to make sure it's the right length. And that just ensures that you have a good proportions on the fly. And I think that's more important for the tire than the than the fish that you're fishing for. Again, I'm kind of sweeping all those hackle fibers back, trapping the quill down a little bit in front, and then just building a nice head. This is where having your bobbin close to the eye of the hook can really give you a lot of good control over where those thread wraps are laid. I'm going to reach in with my hackle plier. I'm sorry, my whip finisher. And wrap two or three wraps. And that helps finish the fly. And one thing I always do to make my flies a little more durable, I never used to do this, and um, it just makes it a lot easier. <laughs> always have a backup. Sweeping the, the hackle out of the way. Painting a little bit of a, painting the head cement so it'll soak into that thread and it'll help hold that hackle in place and that is a gray hackle yellow. <laughs>